Hello, welcome back to another Work Visual tutorial video. In this video, we'll be walking through the Work Visual 6.0 EtherCAT configuration for a KRC5 robot controller. EtherCAT is a communication protocol used for connection to external devices, for example, I.O. We will use the KUKA extension interface KEI for our EtherCAT communication to a field bus. On the robot controller, the KEI is the upper rightmost RJ45 network connector labeled XF8. For this demonstration, we'll be using a Beckhoff EK1100 EtherCAT coupler, an EL1809 16 channel digital input terminal, and an EL2809 16 channel digital output terminal. The EK1100 is connected to a 24 volt DC 10 amp power supply. An Ethernet cable is connected from the input of the EK1100 to the XF8 port on the KRC5. Prior to creating the bus structure and mapping I.O., the device files for the EK1100, EL1809, and EL2809 need to be downloaded to your computer. To do this, search Beckoff.com in a web browser. Then in the search window, enter EK1100 and select the EK1100 EtherCAT coupler. Here you can find additional information about the device and its functionality, but all we are interested in are the configuration files. Scroll down and select Documents and Downloads, then Configuration Files. Click on the XML download. This download contains the device files for the EK1100 coupler as well as many other Beckhoff terminals, so there is no need to search for the EL1809 and EL2809. After the download is complete, the files must be unzipped and saved on your computer. Now that the files are downloaded, we will need to download them in Work Visual. To do this, the project must be closed. Select File, Import Export, Import Device Description Files, and Browse for the desired device files. Set the file type to EtherCAT ESI and open the Beckoff EtherCAT XML. All the device files are displayed. Select the Beckoff EK11, EL1, and EL2. The device files will be displayed in the Import Device Description Files window. Select Next to download the device description files, click Next to import the device description files, and click Finish to complete the DTM's catalog update. The DTM's catalog will update and the device description files will be imported. Click Close. Now we can create the bus structure. Select File, then Browse for Project. The Work Visual Project Explorer is opened. If the controller isn't automatically listed, search for available controllers using the magnifying glass option to specify the controller IP address. Select the Active Project and click Open. Activate the controller. If the configuration does not already have an extension bus, you'll need to add it. Right-click on the bus structure and select Add. Select the KUKA extension bus and click OK. Expand the extension bus and right-click EtherCAT. Select Add and select the EK1100 EtherCAT coupler. Choose the version that is supported by your device. Finally, expand the coupler, right-click the eBus, and add the EL1809 and EL2809. As an alternative, click EtherCAT and select Scan Topology. Confirm prompts by clicking Next as the bus structure adds one device after another. Click Exit after the scan is complete to finish. For this to work, the proper device files need to be added in Work Visual and connection through the KEI must be active on the robot controller. If the KEI connection is not activated, the scan topology won't work. The bus structure must match the hardware so I like to double check my bus structure. If the extension bus appears green, we will need to disconnect it. Right click on the extension bus and click disconnect. Now double click on the extension bus and select the topology tab. Here we can view the current connections of the bus structure. We can delete connections by selecting a connection and hitting the delete key. Additionally, we can draw new connections by clicking, holding, then dragging to a new destination. 
By clicking OK, we can apply and save any changes. If the I.O. mapping window isn't open, click on the Mapping Editor button. The I.O. mapping window is open. On the KRC I.O. tab in the left-hand window, select the area of the robot controller that is to be mapped, for example, digital output. The signals are displayed at the bottom area of the I.O. mapping window. Select the device on the field buses tab on the right half of the window. Drag the signal of the robot controller onto the input or output device. Or alternatively, drag the input or output of the device onto the signal of the robot controller. The signals are now mapped. Clicking the connect button will connect one signal at a time. To disconnect signals, you can select the connection and click the disconnect button. By holding the control key on your keyboard, you can select multiple robot signals at a time. However, the number of signals on the input or output of the device must match. I like to use the signal editors tab to group bytes of device signal outputs to robot output signals. To do this, select the signal editors button. Click and hold the desired output channel and select the number of outputs you want to match. Here we are going to select 8 channels or 8 bits to make a byte. Click OK to confirm this grouping. You can see the group change from bool to byte. To test the connections, you must log in as an expert on the SmartPad. Then you can open the menu, display, input output, and digital output. Select the output to enable, then press value to turn on the output. The corresponding LED on the EL2809 will turn green. This verifies the connection between the extension bus and the robot controller. If the Ethernet cable is pulled from the EK1100 or XF8 port on the robot controller, the error message, stop due to field bus error, is displayed on the smart pad. To fix this, plug the cable back in and the output LED will turn back on. To enable the drives, the error message must be acknowledged. Select Confirm All to acknowledge the error message. At this point, the robot is ready to go. If the EL2809 becomes disconnected from the extension bus, the drives will stay enabled and no error message or warning is displayed on the smart pad. You can check the status of the extension bus by selecting Menu, Diagnosis, Ethercat Topology, Extension Bus. This is helpful for seeing the status of the extension bus. We must refresh the status of the bus. On the smart pad, select Menu, Configuration, Input Output, then I.O. Drivers. Refresh the bus by clicking the Reset button. If this doesn't work, you can select Reconfigure. After the bus is refreshed, the output LED will turn back on and the status of the EL2809 will turn green. Welding robots with an EtherCAD interface can automatically reset both the bus and the welder if the bus goes down. By default, EtherCAD extension bus reset mode is set to manual. You have to do an I.O. reconfigure to get the bus running again. If you have an EK1100 on the X44 extension bus, you have to do this each time the bus stops. By changing the reset mode to auto versus manual, you don't have to do an I.O. configure if the bus stops. This saves a lot of time when you reconfigure the I.O. First, you must navigate to the ECAT SYS X44 XML on the smart pad. Open C KRC Roboter Configure User Common and select ECAT SYS X44.XML and press open. The file is displayed in the editor. Search for the restart mode and set the description to auto. Save and close the file and restart the controller. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.